Hey guys, what's going on? IAQ Josh here, back with yet another product review video. Today, we are going to be showcasing the Atmatube Pro, which is your modern day wearable air quality monitor, as well as a weather station. So let's get to it. All right, so before I jump into sharing what my thoughts are with the Atmatube Pro, let's first talk about a little bit of background information. So, per the company's website, this is a wearable, portable, air quality monitor and weather station. This device reads temperature, relative humidity, PM1, PM2.5, PM10, as well as VOC or volatile organic compounds, and finally, barometric pressure. Now, as per Atmatube, this device requires zero calibration, which is always a plus. This device can also provide you with a real-time air quality score, what they refer to as AQS, as well as you can look at some historical data associated with this AQS score. As part of this historical data, you can look back at daily, weekly, and even yearly results when it comes to the AQS, specifically the PM counts, the VOC counts, and the other data points that this device collects. Even better is that you can access all of this information through the application itself on your smartphone. As for battery life, Atmatube has this device rated at 10 days when you're utilizing the 15 minute sampling intervals. And while I did not test the battery life myself, I can personally confirm that this device will last a number of days at a minimum, and this is with me collecting as small as one minute sample intervals. Now, according to Atmatube, the PM sensor embedded within this device is MCERTS or MCERTS certified. Now, this is the first PM sensor in the consumer grade market to achieve this accomplishment. Again, that is per Atmatube. Now this device, as you see it here alongside me, this was tested by AQSpec, which is Air Quality Sensor Performance Evaluation Center. Now they have a full summary report on how this device did, which I'll include a link below in the description. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about my use case over the past nearly three months of ownership of this device to my side. Now, for going on about three months now, I've had this device both indoors, outdoors, and everything in between. I've had this attached to my hip in both clean and dirty environments. I've had this attached to my backpack walking through America's airports. I've even had this device sat out on the table at some of my favorite restaurants. Now, what type of professional would I be if I didn't bring this bad boy along with me on a couple of professional assessments? So yeah, this little gem has accompanied me on quite a few indoor air quality assessments, as well as some of my more common mold investigations and mold assessments. Within the device itself, we've got a number of different sensors that work together to provide this AQS. However, let's dive into what I consider to be the two most important. The PM sensor or particulate matter sensor is going to be the Sensirian AG SPS 30 PM sensor. Now, according to the manufacturer's specs, this sensor has a 10 year or greater life expectancy, which is great if you intend on keeping this device for a number of years. Now the VOC sensor within this device is going to be the Sensirian SGP C3 VOC sensor. Now according to Sensirian's website, this sensor is no longer made as it's been replaced with the SGP 40 sensor. However, you'll be happy to know that this sensor also has a 10 year or greater life expectancy on it as well. As to the remainder of sensors within this device, I'll include some photos at the end to which you're welcome to pause the video and take a look for yourself and do your own research. All right, so now that we know a bit more about the product itself, you might be wondering yourself, how does this product actually perform in real life conditions? When it comes to the temperature and relative humidity, I'm a little bit displeased to report that the temperature took a little bit long to acclimate when I transitioned from one environment to the other. To add a little bit of clarity, if I was in a cold room and then I went to a warm room, 
whereas other sensors would start to kind of climb there pretty quickly, this sensor was a little bit sluggish on reporting the updated temperature within that room. I also found the results to be just about the same when I was transitioning from an outdoor to indoor environment or vice versa. When it comes to the relative humidity, the relative humidity was a bit more responsive. Albeit it was slightly off from actual, that is comparing to my more expensive industrial and environmental grade pieces of equipment, it was still pretty darn close and plenty suitable for consumers. Now when it comes to particulate matter, specifically the PM1, 2.5, and 10, I was very happy to find that using my smoke generator, we were able to see the numbers on the application drive up pretty rapidly. A second instance in which I was able to see the particulate matter levels drive sky high was through someone in my household using a blow dryer to dry their hair. The VOC results as a whole had a little bit of mixed results. For example, when I had an open bottle of alcohol, which I used to clean some of my instruments, sitting alongside the device, the device didn't really pick it up as being in the air. Whereas when I compared this same little bottle of alcohol to one of my higher level instruments, it picked it up right away. However, when I moved the bottle of alcohol closer to the device, I was able to start to see the VOC numbers climb. Next up, I went ahead and sprayed some cologne in the air, and I'm happy to report that the device picked it up perfectly. I also had very similar results when mixing together a lavender-based cleaning product with some warm water. I was able to see the numbers start to climb on the device as that smell or aroma kind of came over us inside of the room. My last little experiment when it came to the VOCs was applying a little bit of spray paint to a sheet of paper outdoors then bringing in that piece of paper with drying paint. And again, happy to report that the device did pick it up pretty rapidly, actually, and you can start to see those numbers climb in that instance as well. So with respect to the PM sensor versus the VOC sensor, the PM sensor trended extremely well, as did the VOC sensor in most of our trials. However, the PM sensor was certainly more accurate when tested against some of my instruments when compared to the VOC comparison to some of those same instruments. All right, guys, so let's dive on in and take a look at some of the photos that I collected during the course of not only taking apart this device, but also just using it out in some real life scenarios. So as you'll see in front of us here, this first pick, this is going to be the PM sensor, uh, again, made by Sensorian. Uh, as you'll see here, the Sincerian company. Um, over here on the left, we've got the actual battery pack that powers this device. And as you see, as we click through here, we've got a little uh, nice close-up. I flipped this guy over for, for us to review here. We've got a 200 milliamp hour battery inside of the device. So plenty strong, plenty, uh, plenty of power here to get this guy going for a number of days. Um, here's another view of the 200 milliamp hour battery as well as the PM sensor. And then also we can see the backside, not much going on here, but the backside of the actual circuit board um, with the USB-C input. So let's flip this puppy over and now we've got the gorgeous side in my eyes. So we've got the same, very same USB-C input here. Um, we've got a bunch of circuits on here. Again, as I've mentioned in prior videos, I am not a circuit wizard or an electrical engineer by that matter. Um, so I will just tell you how pretty I think this looks. Um, this right here, this is the behind the scenes of the push button on the front of the device to give us that, uh, that LED status update. Um, when we push it, if you remember, we get the blue, green, red, uh, yellow, depending on how impacted the air quality is. Now, over here, down in the lower left corner, <clears throat> excuse me, this is going to be our sensor for the VOCs. So this is going to be where the actual VOCs are, are red. And if we click on, there we go. So we've got a nice close-up of this. Uh, this is also another one of Sincerian's chipsets here. Um, again, I'm going to reference all of this in the description below. Most of you folks out there won't really care about the chipset that's in there, but some of the, the gearheads like myself might. But just for perspective, and this is kind of zoomed in quite a bit, as you can tell, uh, this is going to be the actual VOC sensor. Now, clicking along, just some different views that we're going to have here. Again, the USB input here, 
Um, you can see everything looks pretty dang good. I mean, the, the solder joints on here, everything looks kind of as expected, I'd say. Uh, moving along, this is just a little more perspective of the, let's call it the benchmark testing that I did. Um, over here, uh, many of you experts out there in the industry or even big techies are going to notice the Particles Plus. This is the Particles Plus 8306 model. Uh, this is my six-channel uh, particle counter. So this is going to read everything from uh, PM 0 0.5 all the way up to PM 10. And we're also going to be able to see the micrograms per cubic meter of all these channels, including the 0 0.3 channel. So over on the right, we've got TSI's Q-Track XP meter. This is their new 7585 model, or I should say newest. The focal point of this device, what I'm using this for, is going to be the VOCs for this test. This right here, the Particles Plus, is really going to be the gold standard when it comes to the PM or particulate matter, uh, whereas this Q-Track meter I use for my baseline comparisons for the VOCs. So as we click along here, you can see we actually did use one of the devices that I own, the Cirrus uh, smoke generator. Uh, this device looks like this for reference here. I know it's a little bit small, um, but it's just a little puffing tool to get some smoke out. And um, I use this to actually generate enough of a exposure, if you will, or just bad air quality to see the type of results that we get. This is the smoke pencil generator that I have here at the bottom. So the next couple of photos you'll see, I use two different types of smoke. I use the smoke from the little Cirrus puffer, and then I use the smoke from the smoke pencil generator, which is a bit more plentiful, and we can kind of immerse the sensor in it. And as you'll see, we got we got plenty of coverage on this puppy, and you know, lo and behold, here are the results. So um, yes, quite polluted. I mean, you smother anything in, in smoke, even a non-toxic smoke, this is the result you're going to get. So we've got PM1, 2.5, 10, just absolutely polluted. Um, even our VOCs registered quite high there. So definitely, definitely sensitive to those type of elements. Here's where we did some of the testing with respect to the VOCs. Now you'll see on my, my Q-Track XP device, we've got 25.65 micrograms per cubic meter, which is quite a bit when it comes to the VOC levels. Over here on the right-hand side, all I did was just take a little little uh, bottle of isopropanol alcohol and kind of just waved it around this area. So I didn't necessarily hold it right up against the intake, which is on this side of the machine, but I just kind of waved it around here just to get that aroma into the air. And as you'll see, it, it picked it up very well. Um, I did the same thing again right around this vicinity here, and I didn't quite get as good a results as you might think by getting this in the aroma here now. That could be for a number of reasons. What I suspect is the fan in this device here is a bit more powerful than the much smaller fan uh, that the PM sensor has in here. So that could be one reasoning for it. Um, I don't quite know the specifics. That's a question for Atmatu, but needless to say, the isopropanol alcohol didn't go that well. Whereas the spray paint test that I did over here, you're going to see a whole bunch of spray paint and overspray because... This was a brand new bottle that, no, I didn't shake up well enough. But I sprayed this outdoors, brought the piece of paper in. As you can see, the VOCs here, quite high on this sensor. And believe it or not, you should believe it because that's what it's intended to do, the Atmatube registered this quite nicely. Uh, while the numbers were not quite in line with the 7.26, they definitely recognized the spray paint aroma that was in the air as I waved this piece of paper, just kind of left and right, and it did start increasing those numbers, so I was happy to see that. And then here's just some pictures that I took when I was uh, up in, wherever it was, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, testing out the indoor air quality to try to, aha, to Coca-Cola and company. But, you know, as they said, the indoor air quality actually looked pretty good at this facility for indoors with some construction going on. Again, one of the many use cases, if you're a nerd like me, you can carry it around and try to prove to the world that you are the indoor air quality expert. Here it is taking an outdoor reading for a little bit of comparisons. Um, overall, indoor air quality or outdoor air quality here look pretty good as well. And here's another more recent photo where I was kind of walking around uh, this facility. Bonus points, if you can guess what this facility is, I will give you a virtual high five. I was walking around this department store 
clipped the Atma tube here. As you'll see, this carabiner clip just has a multitude of use cases. In this case, I can clip it to the cart and kind of walk around. And as you can see, this department store had actually had had excellent indoor air quality. So I was very pleased to see that. Not a lot of VOCs for as much new clothing and everything that you have there, which in my eyes is a testament to the ventilation that they had. Had I had my little Aronet here, since the Atma tube sensor can't do it, would have been nice to actually take a look at the uh, carbon dioxide levels um, just to see how low those were because, again, if they did have as good of ventilation as I think they did, we should have seen some very, very low numbers as far as parts per million on the CO2. All right, so let's bring this video to a close by first discussing some of the things that I absolutely love about this device. Number one, it's portability. Small form factor, 360 degree swivel carabiner clip. This thing pretty much goes wherever you go. Another cool feature is going to be this status button. When you push and hold this button, you're going to be shown an LED status light. This can be all the way from blue and green, which are gonna be your better colors, better as far as the air quality around you, all the way down to your yellow, orange, and ultimately reds. Needless to say, this is an alternate method of quickly ascertaining the air quality information around you as opposed to pulling out your app. Let's quickly touch on the build quality. Albeit this guy is plastic, you've got a metal carabiner clip connected to what appears to be a metal retainer ring. You've got this nice aluminum inset face. Overall, this thing looks and feels quality. Now when it comes to the alerts or notifications that you'll see on your phone, this guy will send push notifications to your device, alerting you when there's a bit too much pollution in your immediate area. Now, in addition to the notifications that this device will push to your phone, this device will also actively communicate with your phone and using geolocation, it will actually create an air quality map for you based on areas that you've been. I think it goes without say that if you're considering going back to a location that has bad outdoor air quality as per this device, you might think twice. All right, guys, and that about does it. Thank you for checking out this video. If you have not already, please go ahead and hit that big thumbs up button. I appreciate those. Also, consider subscribing to this channel where you can receive notifications every time I put up a new video like this or maybe something a little more educational. And with that, I bid you a farewell. I'll see you soon.